Did they let you back in Oakland? Did E forty lift the ban? On on me in Oakland? No, what's the name? Squashed that a while ago, man. My man short. Life is oh, too yeah. short. <laughs> he what's your Oakland head? beef? No, you ain't hear about it. Oh, oh man. Oh, E forty had he money. Been under a head. rock. Yeah, now nah, E forty wanted this man dead. <laughs> he may still do. <laughs> he for real. Nah, no, nah, my man Earl. He don't want my head to roll no more. He don't want my head. That's good. You and E forty are good. Yeah, we good yeah. now. We good Happy now. To hear that. It's all. It's all good. What's the was, context for those who are not? It was. Know oh, it was some funny statistics, shit. but I'm plugging so, into the culture. So, all right. <laughs> so let me see. It was my rookie season. Okay. And um, Rap City. Okay. Shout out to my man Big Tig. So Tig was the host. So I remember going down there. We out at like a little playground and he hit me with the, uh, so he like, man, you know, I know that you like hip hop. I see you before the game, you know, you bobbing your head back and forth. He's like, you know, what's some of the music you listening to? I was like, well, you know, I rock with uh, Redman. I fuck with Wu-Tang, you know, Biggie, all of this. I was like, and then I was like, yeah, you know, I don't listen to the, E-40s and a goodie mind. Completely unprovoked. Oh, completely. <laughs> completely unprovoked. And and then so, you know, he was like, oh, okay, okay. And then it it took off from there, Tim. The next thing I know, it was it was crazy because a couple years later, who was my teammate? J.R. Ryder. Where he from? The Bay. Who's one of his homies? 40, right? So it had came up at some point. And he was like, oh yeah, she, he was like, man, you was wrong too, man, for what you said about my nigga 40, man. I was like, well, damn, I said, I ain't really say nothing. I ain't dis- called his name. I just said- And Goody Mob, I don't even I realize said, the Goody Mob I part. didn't listen to his music, yeah. So, you know, he came out with a record about me. And, and you know, record <laughs> haters, this and that. It, damn, it what's was, that nigga's name? <laughs> she Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I heard it and everything. I was like, all right. You know, it was cool. It wasn't I wasn't in no diss tracks myself. So shit, it wasn't like I was gonna get in the studio. Like, yeah, let me get back in the studio, and fire back. Like, nah, I think I play ball. So, <laughs> but you know, that was just me being in my younger days and just uh, sticking with one facet of music. I was pretty much East Coast in it. And mm. but after I got out to Portland and you know, listening with Jay Ryder and. Uh, listening with other West Coast cats, I was like, all right. In my opinion, I was like, all right, Forty could rap. I just didn't get with his familiar with his it. lingo. Yeah, you know, and the way he presented his lingo. Ooh. So, so like, <laughs> we will, you know. And I didn't know that, but fast forward, I'm in Portland, got a radio show. We do the first summer jam. <clears throat> Who's one of the artists? Forty. So Too Short is pretty much our headliner. Mm. And so Short pretty much called me out there, called 40 out there, and was like, you know, man, let's squash this, this and that. And ever since then, you know, it was cool. So, I mean, I, I've said before in plenty of other interviews, you know, that was me being immature in my younger days and not knowing that at the time that that man was still making money from record, gold records, platinum records. I mean... It was just, he was West Coast, I was East Coast. Mm. I didn't know about him. So it would have had to put in them streets too. He could have had you. Hey, could, real <laughs> talk, could yeah. have. That's what we, was, we was playing in Oakland. So <laughs> real what, talk, he could have, you know what I mean? But he could no, have everything, everything cool with him now, man. I, I bumped into him at a Warriors game um, when I was doing some work uh, with another network some years ago. Bumped into him at a Warriors game. Who said hey to who? That's the month. Oh no, we pretty much both spoke to each other, man. He good dude. Oh, that's what she wanted. <laughs> Did you know that? And you story? know he. Yeah. You know oh, the whole man, story? I ain't, I remember I ain't this, got I remember the glasses stuff at the time. Like but, you know he, you know how he look over his glasses. He got the thin <laughs> frames. My man Earl got the thin <laughs> frames. Yeah, you know. He, he's like that's the more. And then, you know, like, all right, but no, he cool though. <laughs> So Redman, when I was 15 years old, there's a CVS in LA on La Cienega across from the Beverly Center, and How High had just come out, and I, being me, a 5 to 10, <laughs> very pale, very, very white, as, and on, on, with every facet, go up to Red, Redman is sitting, uh, he's at the, uh, the pharmacy, and I go, excuse me, um, I just saw your movie and I loved it. And Redman Man. and Redman and I just started chatting up, Mr. Red. And he was he was Redman was so cool. Yeah, and we started talking. We we talking for a few minutes, 
and this woman comes out of the back of CVS holding these packs of blunts, like 15, like stacked. <laughs> there must have been hundreds in each of them, like on a cart, and brings them out to Redman. He's just like, all right, big guy, you're going to take yeah, gotta I'm go. out. Yeah. I'm out. I'm out. Like, Pallet jack of uh, swishers. I mean, yeah, the, the swisher quantity was unbelievable. Hey, why aren't you on NBA 2K? C. T. C. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Cinnamon Toast Crunch is my favorite cereal. It's like, no. No, they got to cut that check, bro. Cut that check. I ain't stupid with it. Were you ever on there? They never. I was. Uh, I was on I mean, there. I thought you used uh, to be on there. Mm -hmm. No, when you um when you sign an NBA contract, you are all part of the, of the licensing and marketing mm. stuff. So it's automatic. So they sign a contract as far as um, EA Sports sign a contract with the NBA itself. Mm. So now they get free reign at all the rosters. So it's automatic once you sign ink your deal, While you're coach player. or player. Mm. Yeah, they got they got the rights to you know put you on the game. So once you went retired, you just didn't. Once you retire, you, it's a separate contract you got to sign. How much is that check? I don't know. Yeah, they don't give it to you. Yeah, yeah. I ain't never I ain't never get that from them because gotta, I, I ain't I mean, never mess with them. I feel like we should get you in two K. I I don't mind. All they gotta do is get that bread up. You know they. So you reason ain't getting I'm all not, that fine money, you wouldn't even need it. But that's why I think. But right that's why now. they want me on the game, because of the that's attitude true. and the tax and the fines. This is true, yeah. So they were known for paying, um, you know, veteran players ten thousand dollars. Okay. To be on the game, mm -hmm. you know, but for that you got to give up your whole nil for a year mm -hmm. for them to do what they want with your shit. With your likeness. Not for no fucking ten grand. Don't get me money? wrong. It's a lot of money. For sure. I'm not, I'm not, you know, overlooking that fact. Definitely. It is a lot of money because it does, you know, could do But for what you're giving up. But for what I'm giving up. Yeah, it wasn't worth it, man. How much would it be? So I told them, you know, because they, they came at me from a couple different angles about four times. So I told them, I said, look, y'all want one or two things. Either give me 125000 or a total percentage point of your gross sales for the year. You would, they would have you killed before they would give you a percentage point. You see, of your I'm sales. not on that game. <laughs> why 125? Why was that the number you decided? Because I, I was going to break it down with with cats on the squad. Because huh. there was going to be all of us on there. You know what I'm saying? Even though I know they wanted me, because like a lot of people be disappointed. Even though he could play, a lot of people was like, "Oh man, they got y'all up there. Come on, she." Y'all ain't the same. They got fucking Darko in your spot. I'm like, dog, Darko can play. Not on a game. That's no, that's <laughs> no. No, that's the facts. He be I'm sure he's a nice guy. And in practice. Oh, uh, Darko can play cover. for real, but yeah. He's like a the, 71 on a game. game. Yeah. I can't get jiggy with that shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's they need a non-71, respect to Darko. A non-71. Fact. But on there, no, that but Darko again, like Darko could ball for real. Darko could ball, cuz Darko could ball. Hopefully, we get Ben up on this joint. Ben Wallace up on here one day. He'll he'll let you know. Like in practice, he would give me a Darko story. Like um, no, just see the thing about Darko, he had to get mad to play. We used to beat his ass. Mm. You know, foul him on purpose, fuck him up right. on purpose, and he coming right back at us though. He didn't stop. It was just the fact, you know, Darko was like, look. He was already a professional player right, so when he over came in over. Europe. Yeah. yeah, so coming here for a little bit more money, shit, he living the life. I'm, right. I'm on a team. I ain't really got to play. We winning? We winning? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kick that shit. Right. I'm going to kick it. That's my man, He's though. I fucks time. with Darko. Clinching game. Game five. Hmm. We at the gym. Who comes to the gym in shorts, shoes, no socks, <laughs> and like a t-shirt or like a button-up shirt? Darko. And which which was no problem. Right. You know what I'm saying? 
Cause this is before it really got heavy with the mm. dress code shit. Mm. Like, all right, you know, he had a button up on, mm. but damn, Darko, what the fuck? Where you coming from? Uh, it was out jet skiing this morning. <laughs> <laughs> he out on the lake jet skiing and power boating and all that, having fun. I don't blame that. Yeah, 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 yeah. y'all can't have a good time. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame it. Like, I know I ain't gonna get a lot of burn. Right. So, I'm gonna kick that shit. And it was just unfortunate, though. He broke his, it just so happened he got like two, three minutes in that last game. And broke his hand. And th- broke his thumb. And the, cha- the championship yeah, clincher, championship. right? Yeah. So, that's why <laughs> you don't see Darko was just fucked up in most of the pictures that we have taken. Right. Was he had to go get his hand. Um, fixed up, his thumb fixed mm. up. I was like, damn. But like as a teammate, everybody rock with him. Everybody rock with him, Darko was good. I mean, everybody on the game ain't for, don't fuck with him. No. Yeah, but, but yeah, man, they get, they get that checkup, they make too much money to try to offer a cat just $10,000 for NIL. True. You talking hundreds of millions of dollars just in the United States alone, not even worldwide. Right, what was your welcome to the league? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, on everything, bro. So, oh, who who's your favorite NBA team? I grew up an Orlando Magic fan because of okay. Shaq and Penny. But then I, I quit them later because they just disappointed me too many times. Too many damn times. So, my welcome to the NBA. My rookie season, 95, we in Mexico City preseason. I'm with the Bullets. It's the year before they started calling them the Wizards. So on the team. You older shit, man. They were still called the Bullets. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> so <laughs> it's me, C Webb, um, Jawan Howard, mm. Big George Muir sign. Got a big ass team. Why did y'all have that many Mitch, big? Mitch Butler. Yeah. Calvert Cheney. Um, Robert Pack. Uh Tim Legler. Legs was out there? Um, uh, my, my vet, who was my guy, Bob McCann, and the Price Brothers. That was the Both whole, of them? Mark Price, man, I played with Mark Price, bro. Damn. I mean, granted, he ain't, at the time, he wasn't, you know, getting You have to say he was washed up, yeah. But dog, man, just to be out there, I think he was one of the greatest point guards to play the game, but that's another topic, but so, Mexico City, we playing the Spurs. Mm. All right, so I'm at the time, I'm not understanding the whole preseason thing. Like, what didn't you get with the stars playing? Uh, right. So it was like, of course, you know that's that's pretty much the trash time. They gonna play for the first three, four minutes of the quarter, and then and check out. everybody else coming yeah. in. So, <coughs> all right. I'm going up against David fucking Robinson, bro. <laughs> the Admiral. He was strong as shit. So That was my note. He bust my ass. Yeah. He bust my ass, bro. It was nothing I could do with him. 30 points, 18 rebounds Jesus. in 30 minutes. I remember that stat line. So he was cooking you good. Huh? Yeah. What? Wasn't nothing I could do, because usually, and I was, you know, I was young, thin. He was stronger. He was just as fast. He was just as athletic. And, you know, for like, you know, two, three dribbles to get to the basket, put it on the floor. He's what, like seven one, seven two, and he's he like seven, he's like seven, true, he true like footer? seven yeah. yeah, he true footer. Like us. Like us. You know what I'm saying? You see how big we sitting on this couch. Yep. Nothing I could do with him, dog. Bust my ass. So we played him again the second night. I'm like, all right. I'm going to get him tonight. Still bust my ass. <laughs> he ain't had 30, though. He had like 21. Okay. Know, some shit like Better. You put up some fight. I felt good. Yeah. I felt good, you know, even though I really... Didn't do too much. He just missed shots. Right. But that's the game. Hey! Yep. But no, that was my welcome to the NBA. I called my mom, everything, yo. Like David Robinson just kicked my ass. Oh, uh, hey, look, let me tell you. It was two times in my life I ever called my mom bitching and crying. 
discipline. One time was I was a young boy, 14, 15 years old, playing against the Sixers, and Charles Barkley and Rip Mahorn, my two OGs, mm. beat my ass. They were playing. They was sent me Sixers. home. They was playing normal. Yeah, they were not like sent me home. This crying. is a 14 year old kid. We are gonna take it easy. No, on fuck you. that. You out here they on the playing floor. like you was. Yeah. They knew who I was. David sent my ass yeah. home and. The second time I called my mom from Mexico City, I was like, Mom, I called my mom and my coach. I was like, Mom. You called her internationally. I was like, Mom, this nigga, you bust my ass, yo. I, Because I never had my ass bust. Ew. Like, I never, I never had nobody really give me buckets like that. Right. You know, in college, and high school. Like, you just didn't know what. Like, like, you didn't have nothing to do with him. Couldn't do nothing with him. Sorry. But. Once I became, you know, got more experience in the league and went against David Robinson again, you know, I knew his certain tendencies and stuff mm. like that. But damn, yo, I don't, I don't know if anybody else had a had a worse welcome to the NBA moment. Thirty That's, and eighteen. I was saying because preseason, it's like you you're not supposed to be trying that hard. Like, why are you trying this hard? It's because he was like super straight, like, like super religious. Like he wasn't in party in Mexico City. I don't know. I don't, I don't close. know if he was like. Look, I'm gonna play this first game to get some cardio in, so I'm gonna play this little 28 minutes. Right. But bro, 30 points, 18 boards in like about 30 minutes, 28, 30 minutes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, shit. No, he bust my ass though, bro. <laughs> <laughs> when did you know it was time to hang it up? When I was in New York, I had broke my foot, my left foot, and um, you know, I rehabbed, I did everything for a majority of that season. So it came down to the last game of the season. Um, we were already going to the playoffs. I rehabbed, came back, and I was like, all right. I'm like, this is it right here. You this, knew. This, 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 this shake and bake time. So, Got out there, actually, and it was crazy too, playing in Charlotte, mm. of all places. So got out there, and I'm trying to play, and I'm 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 weary of my foot. But then after a while, you out there, that adrenaline take over, and them instincts take over. Mm. And so you know, I'm out there going against a couple of young fellas and playing some D, so you know, I'm sliding like this, and I felt a little bit, I was like, ah, shit. And then next time down court on defense, I, I think it was something like I ran up to show real quick on the pick and roll, and then tried to get back, and then that's when I felt it in my foot. Mm. I was like, yeah, I was like, it's a wrap. What, like, did it break again? Like No, what? no, but it was, it, it just uh, set my whole rehab back, like, uh. You know, I, I felt myself training for about three, four months. Cause that was my that was my date. I was coming back, like, yo, I'm gonna play this season. For the season over, I'm gonna play. For the season over play. Boom, here it is. And I'm out there for like five minutes. Damn. And look, when it happened, I looked at the coach on the bench, I looked at Mike, I was like, What's up? Come get me and just walk straight to the back. And that's when I knew I was done. You knew it wasn't no re. You you didn't want to come back. You it was, was done. Rat. It took it took too much energy to try to do that. And then you know, it's a lot of wear and tear on your body and shit. Like you know, I have a lot of problems now and shit from when I play. As far as you know, body aches and you know everything could be feeling good one day. Then my elbow will start hurting. Mm. I'm like, damn, why the fuck my elbow hurt? Then you try, you hit the recall button, and you hit, oh, damn, that time I tried to reach over Shaq, big ass, and snatch the <laughs> rebound real quick, but he grabbed it, and then it hyperextended my elbow, and all. Then you think, you know, you think of all your injuries and shit, but, you know, once once you know, your, your, your body will tell you, That's and that's when I knew. My body told me, like, yo, we gave you that, that good old Mission College try. Go ahead and hang this thing up. We looking forward to retirement. Did you ever think about overseas or anything? Or you know, you was like, I'm out. It was a rat. You ain't want to go to like the Shanghai Sharks and score like 86. I ain't want to go to Shanghai. I ain't go want to go to Taiwan. Get you 48, I ain't go to 48. Brazil. I don't have no numbers. None of that. 
You not no hooper, dog. <laughs> <laughs> you should have been over there getting like 96 and 50. Just to say you did it, man. I know that's not your mentality, but it's a real shame. What? You could have went, yeah. See if you could average Don't like 86 for a season. So I, I should have hit a, a, a reverse Sabonis roll. Yeah. So Sabonis came over here when he was an older statesman. I should have went over there. You go over there. Rashid <laughs> Walosevic. 38, 15, and 12 every single night for the uh, Lithuanian Sharks. Oh, God. You've been out there getting busy. Somebody told me that Rasheed Wallace had the first Maybach in the NBA. Now, that little birdie was telling you right. Is that so? Yeah. Yeah. That was a good one. Too. When was this? Oh, fucked them, fucked them up with that one. Um, this probably was about oh oh two or oh three. It was it was a few months before I got traded, right? So a friend of to mine. Uh, it was a few months I got traded from Portland to Atlanta, which Detroit. ended up in okay. Detroit. So, gotcha. um, a childhood friend of mine I grew up with, went to high school with. He played pro baseball for the Yankees. Okay. So, you know, it's like, all right, um, I'm going to go down there, you know, check him out. It's a little spring spring training. Go down there, check him out. We was already out of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So I went down there to check him out. And as soon as I got there, he was like, yo, um, yeah, I got to go pick my car up from the bench, John, because my shit ready. You know, he had to get some work done or whatever. So I'm like, all right, bet. So, you know. He picked me up from the airport. We rode to the Benz shop. We get there, uh, that Mercedes Benz of Tampa. So, you know, I'm just, <laughs> just walking around, just looking like, oh, that's a nice car. Oh, do, 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 while he taking care of his business. Over there in the corner, I see a kiosk. So, what do we always do when you ain't supposed to touch it? Touch it. Touch it. Oh shit. I'm like, okay. So the dude, my homie came back, he's like, yo, you ready? I'm like, yeah. So I asked the dude, I was like, yo. I said, come here for one second. What is this? He's like, oh, you know, that's that's a uh a version of a Maybach. Um, you know, it used to be an older Mercedes-Benz car, this and that. They're trying to bring it back out. It's luxury. He ran ran the whole spiel. Mm. How much is that? He was like, oh, you can get one. We can start building it, you know, for a small deposit. How small deposit are we talking? That, and that's what I was like. I was like, well, what's the deposit? He's like, oh, it's, it's uh, 50 down. That's it? I said, what, 50 cent? <laughs> <laughs> and he's, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I was like, so 50,000 down? He's like. Yeah, and you know, we'll send you your package. You can build your car out, this and that. You have fifty thousand dollars cash on you? No, I have my credit card. Mm. I was like, Run it, <laughs> dog. Two weeks later, I got everything. I had got like the little pamphlet. Um, I can pick my different colors, different leathers, different wood grains. One of the options, motherfucker, was marble. Marbly. Marbly. Did you get it? I couldn't. Only reason I didn't get the marble in there, because I couldn't find, at the time, I couldn't find an insurance company in the United States that would insure it. That's the only reason I didn't get Why marble. Why wouldn't they? Because it's marble, bro. It is marble. Way more expensive than fucking wood grain. Yeah. Like, I'm like, Yo. Nobody would though. Then why is that Too an option? Expensive. Why is that an option? Well, it's a it's a, a European car. You know, Benz is German, so that's you know that's some of the things they do over there. Obviously, you insured over there. I could have, but the shit wouldn't have done me no good at home. That German general insurance. <laughs> don't, don't apply the here. Ger the yeah. German general wouldn't uh, apply then, here. Uh, uh. But no, nah, I got that, John. Um, you know, picked out my color interior, did all that shit, blah, 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 blah. And so when it finally came, I had to go to the Mercedes-Benz dealer in Portland, in downtown Portland, to pick it up, right? So, boom, all right, I go pick it up. We got a game the next day. 
So, you know, I ride around town, ride on the highway, get used to it. I'm like, oh, I'm like, damn, this is a nice ass fucking luxury car right mm -hmm. here. Going like 80, 85, feel like you're doing about 50, you know, because you're not hearing it on the outside. So you're not hearing all the whoosh, 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 driving by the cars. Yeah, the, yeah, the road. Da, 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 da. You ain't hearing all that shit. I'm like, damn. Curtains on the shop. I'm like, yo, this motherfucker is top notch right here, right? So the next day, pull up at the arena. So uh, I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and get there a little bit early today, you know. Pulled up on the joint. It was like one or two other cars there, and then guys kept coming. Yo, who shit is that? What the fuck is that out there? Oh, what you talking about? I don't know. My cousin dropped me off. Da, 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 da. What's out there? I'm playing dumb. Right. The other team comes. You know, because back then, when, when you're pulling up in the loading dock, that's where a majority of the teams park at is the loading dock right there where the visiting team comes in. Okay. So, like, you know, guys out there, we on the court uh, pregame just shooting and warming up. You know, cats talking, hey, how you been? How's your mom? How the family? Blah, 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 blah. Who shit is that out there? What is that? What you talking about? It's the shit out there. It's the, it's the blue. It, it got some. That's the mountain best peaks. That's on the it. best compliment you can get. Who shit is that out there? They yeah. don't know what it is to describe they it. Don't know but, what it yeah. is. Cause everybody knows the Ferrari symbol, the horse. Right. Everybody knows the Porsche symbol. You know, with the little crest shield. Mm. Everybody knows the uh, yeah. knew the Bentley the symbol. Cause that Bentley, Bentley was big yeah. back then. Man. But them that double M. Ain't nobody know what the fuck that was. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about that. <laughs> you know, that's your boy out there. Man, what the fuck is that? Yeah, that's that new shit, dog. You know what I'm saying? That's that my bog Ben shit, da 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 Niggas like, oh shit, motherfuckers is on it. And next thing I know, like within a year and a half, now you got a couple guys in the league with a my bog but. I was, yeah, I was the first dude. I could, I could definitely for sure say that nobody else in the league had a mic box before me. Innovator. Hey, I'm from Philly. We trendsetters. You still have it? How long did you keep it? No, I only, I, I can't. <laughs> Let me tell you, when them checks stop, <laughs> it was time to get that thing in. You hear me? Cause I couldn't, I couldn't afford them trips to the shop. Mm. That shit came like, it might. All right, say your brake light might have came on. All right, you go in there, you get your brakes checked. When I had that bitch, no matter what it was, when I took it to the shop, minimum twelve hundred. Shit. Each time, like no I could have went in and be like, "Yo, my uh, my left headlight lamp is flickering just a little when I turn on the high beams. Somehow, some way, that shit gonna come out to be twelve hundred. Every time. Every fucking time. I was like, all right. So at the end of it, when them checks slowed down and everything slowed down, like, hey, I got to get rid of this motherfucker right here. This is a house I'm riding in, shit. Like, right. like God damn. This it's costing me more. Sheesh. <laughs> Man, and it, that thing ate up gas, but I did have a good time in it. And I can say this. I had my Maybach. Um, when I came to Detroit, we won it that year. Mm -hmm. And with my winnings from the championship, I bought my my brother a Maybach. Mm. So for about four or five months, me and my brother, we killing the scene. Everywhere we go, we in Philly, we in Carolina, driving up to DC, Double Maybach. VA, down here in Atlanta. The, mine's was blue, his was silver. Oh, the shit was fucking murder. We was killing the scene then. But yeah, we had to get them shits up though. <laughs> You ever think about getting it back? You ever miss it? You don't miss paying twelve hundred dollars to get your uh, headlight. No, I don't want that shit back. Get a that windshield shit, wiper. That shit too much problems, and, and it's not like problem problems, but it's like too much attention. Mm. Like you know, that's, I'm I'm in a different setting now. Man. How cold was the bonus? I wish I could have saw him in his younger days, man. Mm. You know, just from hearing from other players around the league. Um, you know, who were my elders who played against him on that Olympic level. Um, listening to my man Vladi Divat mm. um, talk about him. Um, no, nah, they say Sabonis was cold, bro. They say he, he was cold. Like, 
could put it on the floor, could shoot the tramp, could stroke the tramp. Um, crazy passer. Crazy passer, had a good post up game. Mm -hmm. um, good wheel and deal down there in the post. Yeah. Yeah, they say he, man, they say he was a handful, man. How good was he in Portland? Because I know it was like after the injuries and later, but I feel I remember like watching him, him still being effective in the role he was well, in. Yeah, when I was there, he was a he was a vet then. Of course, he was much older and you right. know he had all the ailments, but he was still out there diamond us and shit. You know, me, Jr., Damon, Bonzi, mm. uh, even Pitt. You know, for the times when he was, but man, he yeah he would dine the shit. It was times where he might have. Quite a few games let us in assists. Yeah. Because he's going to come and, you know, you're always going to get... Uh, I was like, he throwing the no-look joints. <laughs> you sitting there posting, it's like you cut through. I seen him bust a couple people in the face a couple times too now. Why? Because they're not looking. You're not looking and you're not expecting it, you know. you thinking it's more like, okay, I'm going to feed him in the post and, and coach is telling me to cut through. So you just cutting through. Not the, that ball coming right back. Right. Oh man, yeah, plenty of times. I got busted in the face. He bust me in the face before, and and Rod Strickland um hit me with a no look to the face before. I and that lets me know well, you learned keep, your lesson to keep my eye on them motherfuckers at all times. <laughs> Cause you never know when they're gonna hit you with that ball, yo. Is he the best passer you ever played with? Sabonis, he's one of them. He's one of the best. I would have to say he's the best big man passer. Yes. Mm. Yes. But uh, overall, he's one of them. How much more valuable is that passing skill coming from a big man? man? It's needed. It's needed. That's where, you know, a lot of your offenses get ran at. Um, shit, that whole triangle with the Bulls, you know, that, that whole offense depended on a passing big man mm. um, for the most part. A passing big man and a, a, a good shooting guard. And, you know, not just saying just periodically with Mike, but you had to have a good shooting guard period to play in that offense. And your big man had to be a good passer right. to play in that offense. But yeah, it's 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 needed. You know, because especially now, I'm glad Denver won with that big lineup. Mm. With with uh Joker and Aaron Gordon. I'm glad they won with that because now that's giving light more, okay, well, we tried to been we told y'all for the last few years that the big man ain't went nowhere, but it's been guard heavy. All the guards want to shoot, shoot, shoot threes, and oh, I'm gonna cross you over and take six side steps and then put it up. And that's what the guards want after. But okay, y'all can go ahead and do that. It's only gonna last for but so long. Everybody thought they could do that Golden State effect. Well, Golden State got two fucking right. extraordinary shooters. Two of the best of all time, yeah. Y'all don't got that, but all the other teams tried to emulate that Oh, we gotta put up the threes. That's where all the analytic bullshit came from. Oh, we gotta put up the threes, put up the threes. Nah. You don't need all that. Just go out there and play. They played big with them too. Wasn't nothing that nobody could do with them all season. Mm. And now what everybody wanna do, they wanna go get a big man that's somewhat a post player, that's somewhat a passer or defender. Mm. Cause they all now they all wanna emulate Denver, you know. You, this is a, a, a small copycat this is a copycat, league. yeah. Once the winner wins with a certain way, everybody else try to emulate. Because this wasn't, we wasn't on TV. So before um, it was the Malice in the Palace, <laughs> it was Golden State versus uh, Blazers. <laughs> <laughs> His shot. <laughs> you were telling me about that. Yeah, the shit, is, <laughs> the Rasheed shot. Turn around, jumper that started a whole melee. Oh, and uh, <laughs> I remember that to this day. <laughs> Hilarious. See, what do you remember from, from that moment? Oh, we was going back and forth with him. So it came down to the last possession. Um, they called my number, turn four. And turn four. So I had to rock. And, and I, I know y'all remember, because y'all was in the league at this time, too. I can't remember their brother's name, but they sat right there across from the Warriors bench. Yes. Like the last maybe four or five seats. Yes, Art, right? yes, yes, so yes, I'm, yes. I'm going back and forth with them all night. Uh, turn four, they called my number. As soon as I turn, hit the shot, that's when uh, Bonzi and 
uh, Chris Mills got into it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they started, you know, shoving and pushing and grabbing and tugging each other's jerseys and all that. Mm -hmm. And it was like baseball. Yeah. Benches cleared. <laughs> like, yo, it was, it was hilarious. You know, we had fans throwing shit at us and all this <laughs> yeah. shit. And, like, man, this, this one fan did clock me, though. He, he threw, it like, a drink at me. And uh, that shit was like... Uh, I, f I felt like Arsenio in, in Coming to America when O Dude threw the shake on mm -hmm. him. I mean, Eddie. Yeah. When O Dude threw the shake on him, he was like, ugh. This. <laughs> That's how Dude Drink hit me. And oh, I tried to go up in the stands and everything. I had cats <laughs> tugging at my waist. And, yeah, man. I had people in the stands. They was fighting the people. Oh, oh hey, look. Yeah, that was that was that was the malice before the malice, malice right know, there. Bro, that's what I said. It was that one was wild. And 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 so no, this what made it wild for real. You get to say because you on the bus. On the bus. Okay, yeah. So I, you know everybody. You know I was there. Tell it. I heard. So team security. It. I mean, on both sides and and um, the arena security, they made sure everything was cool. All right, bet. So you know we go in and after the game had a coach meeting, this and that, blah blah blah. So we. You know, uh, shower up and do the media, this and that. Boom, bang, go out and, you know, you speak to your family, friends that came to the game, this and that. So as we getting on the bus, it's like, all right, we the last couple last dudes on. So y'all know how it was at that time. When you leave in the arena on a visitor's locker room, you only got about 50 paces to you outside at the bus. Mm -hmm. So we all on there and we pulling out. And as, as they slide the gate back, mm -hmm. the security slide the gate back to let the buses go, man, before we left the lot, it was like two or three cars that pulled in front of us that didn't move. And old boy hopped out, was like, yeah, talk all that shit now. What the fuck y'all want? This and that, da 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 And we like, and, and team security like, yeah, don't y'all get off the bus. <laughs> <They're not. laughs> you know, don't y'all do nothing. This and that. He's like, yeah, you know. So man, it, it was crazy how that whole thing went down, but mm -hmm. it was it was resolved <laughs> by a couple of phone calls yeah. because you know at that time Chris was supposed mm -hmm. to have been you know mm -hmm. this and that, mm -hmm. and so we made some calls. I'm not I ain't gonna put people. Oh no, you know we know uh, yeah. those that no no trust. So you know made a couple calls to some OGs. Mm -hmm. Yo, man, get this nigga from the fuck up out of here, man. You know, we trying to go ahead. This this going to be a whole thing now because it's federal. You talking about dealing with a yeah. billion-dollar business, the NBA. Yeah, like, like, thought, man, get this motherfucker out of here. And a couple calls was made, this and that, and that shit got squashed. Yeah, like, it got squashed for y'all, not me. It, it got I got squashed my for ass us. whooped the whole year. From that one moment? Yeah, because I wouldn't let it go. I wouldn't let it, oh, you talking oh, you to me like that, but you ain't said it to Bonzi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I, you talking about ass whooping, boy. I, hey, listen, he didn't touch y'all, no, but I got, look, whatever he was trying to get a Bonzi, <laughs> he gave that shit to me. <laughs> so we got some video of, of that, that game so for, for the audience out there so they can. Oh, for y'all do? Look, this used to be HD back in those days. Buckets. Oh, oh, I was going to say, that ain't the play. <laughs> this is my yeah. Oh, god damn it. And look, Chris and Bonzi. <laughs> he had him already. Chris had Bonzi already. <laughs> Bonzi <laughs> like, hold up. I can't let him jump on my young boy. Who holding Anto Rube back? Antonio yeah, Daniels, Daniels holding Rube back. You blocking AD. <laughs> no, no, no. I had to, I had to hey. tear. Yeah. Hey, hey, look. <laughs> hey, look. Yeah. He was crazy. Lucky they held, held the man-child back. Yeah. No, no. Antonio Davis, lucky he no, no. held that. What's dude. so funny is I, because I see, like, oh, shit. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. So I had to pick up the chair, like, come on, we got the same agent, bro. We got the same agent. Hey. So we got yeah. the same agent. We got the same agent, bro. <laughs> okay, fight. No, Rube got that different strength. No, 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 no. He beeline right. It was, like, it was like the first person he seen with a white uniform. He was like, and I was like, it was Jason Richardson. No, we got to say. <laughs> Yo, Rube Patterson, that's my guy. He one of them cats. I want him on my team. Yeah. yeah. If, if it come down to a scuffle, a street fight, what a, I want him on my team. What's up, everyone? It's Tyler. If you use promo code SHEED, new customers compare picks with NBA players that have higher than one point. 
All they have to do is score one point to win. This is the easiest way to make money on underdogs. So make sure you sign up with code SHEED to take advantage and win some money.